Today we're going to start actually coding something inside Optic Run to PSP programming. So as you guys can see right in front of me here, I have a very basic index page with basic HTML5 code. And we talked about in one of the previous episodes that when we do actually do Optic Run to programming, we don't code the code directly where we need to use it. That's what we call procedural programming, which is one we've done in one of the previous lessons or previous courses I did on PHP. In these series, we're going to do Optic Run to programming meaning that I'm actually gonna go ahead and open up a new document where all the code containing, you know, the Optic Runter code is going to be saved inside of. So after opening up a new document, I'm gonna go ahead and save it inside my root folder. I'm actually gonna go ahead and include a separate folder for all my Optic Runter files. So I'm gonna say new folder. I'm gonna call this one includes, and you guys can call whatever you want. You could also just save it inside the main part of your root folder. I'm gonna go ahead and put it inside an includes folder. So inside this folder, I'm gonna go ahead and save the file as new class dot ink dot php. Now again, you guys could just call it new class dot php. The dot ink does nothing other than just the name of the file. I like to put ink inside my files because it's inside an includes folder. So don't get confused about me putting ink inside my actual file name. So now that I created the name, I'm gonna go ahead and save the file like so. And now we have a completely separate file just for the optic run to code. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my PHP code inside this file here. I'm gonna go ahead and just go down a few lines. And now we can actually go ahead and get started creating these classes that we need to use inside optic run to programming. Now, when it comes to a class, it's basically a big object that contains a lot of different information, such as variables and functions regarding one thing. For example, we could have a class called user which has all the information regarding the users, such as the variables and the functions that might be related to users. Now, when it comes to optic or into programming, we don't call these variables and functions anymore. We actually call it something called properties and methods. Now, they're not entirely the same as variables and functions, but they're very similar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say they're very similar to these variables and functions, even though they're called properties and methods. So inside, this document. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a new class. So I'm going to go ahead and say we have a class, which is just written like so, pretty simple. Now when we want to name the class, a typical thing to do for programmers when it comes to class names is to start with a big letter. So in this case, just because I have to name it something, I'm just going to go ahead and call this one new class. You guys could call it whatever you want. I'm just going to go ahead and give it this name. After we give it a class name, we're gonna go ahead and open up the curly brackets. Now inside the curly brackets is where we're gonna put all these properties and methods that are related to the class. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a comment here that says properties and methods goes here. So now we have a class that actually has a name and we have a place we can actually put the properties and methods. The next thing we need to do is talk about how we actually access stuff inside the class. Because this class is gonna have a lot of information, but if we can't actually get the information and show them inside the website, then it becomes pretty much useless if we can't actually get the information. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here, so I'm gonna go ahead and go underneath the class, which is down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and do something we call instantiating a class, which basically means so creating some kind of object that contains all the information regarding the class. The way we do that, is by creating some kind of variable. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this one object because this is what we call an object when we do actually instantiate a class. I'm gonna set it equal to new space and then the name of the class we have up here called new class. So I'm just gonna copy it, paste it down here and close it off. So now we instantiated the class by creating an object. And now we can actually get access to all the properties and methods we have inside the class when we do actually call on this object here. Now, just to show you guys what exactly is inside this class, what we can do is after we instantiated this class by creating an object, is we can actually go ahead and go underneath our object and print out everything we have inside the class, just so we can actually see what's in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use a function called var underscore dump parentheses, semicolon, and I'm gonna put the object inside the actual parentheses. So now that we have this, we should get all the information from the class. If I go back to the website, right now I'm inside the index page, which we haven't really started yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and go up into my URL, go inside my includes folder, and then go into new class, 
dot ink dot php and let's actually make sure we spell that correctly like so and as you guys can see we now have a object called new class and right now we have nothing inside the actual object so this is how it looks like when it's completely empty i'm just going to go and zoom in for you guys so you can actually see this is how it looks like when it's completely empty so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go inside my class and just to show you guys an example i'm going to go ahead and create a property now I'm going to go ahead and do something that we haven't talked about yet, which is I'm going to declare a public property. Again, if we can actually spell that correctly, so I'm going to say public. I'm going to give it a name by creating a variable. I'm going to say info. I'm going to set it equal to a string called this is some info. Like so. So if I go back inside the browser, you guys will notice that now we do actually see that we have some information inside this class. So this is how we can actually get started creating classes. This is how we can put stuff inside the class. In the next episode, we're gonna talk about what exactly this public means and talk about some of the other things we can put in front of our properties and methods when it comes to public, private, and protected. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.